Greetings, Seahawk fans, and welcome back to another edition of Hawk Talk. I'm Brian Mall, UNCW basketball beat writer for the Star News, and we, this is where we take a look at what's going on inside the program. Coming off two blowout victories, the Seahawks were brimming with confidence entering their CAA opener against George Mason, but it didn't turn out quite as they had hoped. The Seahawks entered the game near the top of the CAA in many offensive categories, but were pitiful on offense against the Patriots' aggressive half-court man-to-man. UNCW shot 35% from the field and committed 20 turnovers, which gave George Mason way too many easy baskets. John Fields continued his stellar play, however, 21 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 block shots. If he continues playing at this pace, it'll be difficult to keep him off the all-CAA team. Chad Tomko really struggled with his shot, was 4-15, finished with 11 points, helped the Seahawks rally from a 20-point deficit in the second half, but they just couldn't get over the top. George Mason led wire to wire. The Seahawks are uh, on an exam break this week and kind of at the uh, quarter pole of the season, if you will, figured it would be a good time to bring in UNCW women's beat writer Tim Hauer, a correspondent for us, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the the women's team. And um, I guess uh, they were p- picked in the middle of the pack. Have, have they kind of looked like a middle of the pack team so far? Do you think they're going to meet those expectations? Yeah, um, last year they got up to, to fifth, which was you know their best finish in, in quite a few years, and and really looked like they were going to be able to build on that this year um, with five returning starters coming back, um, and they had a you know a key injury um, to Jessica Freeman, um, and, and really just not sure they found offensively what they're looking for yet. They're always going to be a good defensive team under Ann Hancock, and I think their defense has been fine this year, but. Um, it seems like it's just the Brittany Blackwell show. She's averaging over 15 points, and they don't have anybody else averaging over 10. So they've really got to be able to find uh, another score. But, you know, the league is so deep right now with VCU. Um, just beat Virginia, who was a ranked team. Delaware's got Elena Deladon, who, you know, committed to UConn. Um, VCU made a tournament last year. Old Dominion's always good. So it's a really tough league. So, yeah, somewhere I would say somewhere between probably six and eight this year is, is probably the best bet for them. How big of a loss is Freeman, and how does that impact you know them offensively? Yeah, I only got to see Jessica um, in the exhibition game, and then in the in the first home game, she injured herself in the second game at ECU. Um, but really, she was a uh, you know she really took control of the ball, and she was really solid, a solid ball handler. Um, really looked confident out there, even though she was a freshman, and uh, was able to attack the basket, which is something that they've been missing too. Um, they've got Casey Sawhook running the point right now, and she's done a pretty good job of handling the ball and not turning it over. Um, she's not really a threat um, to get to the basket. She can shoot it from outside a little bit, um, but they really need that guard to, to penetrate. Just one player, like you mentioned, averaging in double figures in Blackwell. Um, who else do you see? Uh, I know uh, yeah, they were expecting maybe a little bit more from Martha White. Who else do you see as someone that can kind of help her uh, shoulder some of that scoring load? Yeah, Brittany plays a little bit inside and out. She's been forced to, to play a little bit more inside this year um, just because Martha's really the only other post presence they have. Um, they've really got to get Martha going. Um, she's taking good shots and she's getting good looks. Um, they're just not falling for her right now, and I feel like that, that'll change a little bit. And it seems like she's forcing a lot, too. She's got a lot of travel calls this year, shuffling her feet. And, um, looks like she's just trying to do a little too much. But they expect her to, to get in the scoring. And, and also Greta, um, Uchida, um, is, is their other guard. Um, and they need her to, to shoot the ball well. Um, and she's, she's had some open looks this year. It's really, she's kind of passed them up, which is surprising um, with as good of a shooter as she is. So they need her to start making some shots, too. And, because they're not really going to get scoring from the other two positions. Candace Walker's kind of in there um, just to rebound and defend. And, and like I said, Casey's not really a threat to score either. Um, you know, she could chip in a couple threes maybe here and there, but they really need those three to, to, to focus on the scoring load. Well, uh, from listening to that, it sounds like there's a lot of similarities between the women's team and, and the men's team. Uh, on the men's side, you know, John Fields and Chad Tomko have, have pretty much delivered what you would expect from them. Uh, both are on track to uh, all CAA type seasons I would say uh, really for the for the men's team it's finding some more production on the perimeter uh, Johnny Wolf 
of Maude Grant and Daryl Felder are the, are the three guys in the rotation there. And they, they really haven't, uh, especially in the games the Seahawks have lost, they haven't given a, a whole lot. Um, they're shooting the three-point shot pretty well, but um, I think shooting 24% on two-pointers in those five losses. So uh, that's really, um, you know, you, they need to relieve some of the pressure from, from Chad and from John because uh, John saw a bunch of double teams against George Mason, was still able to produce. However, he's going to continue to see double teams, maybe even a few triple teams from time to time until uh, somebody on the perimeter proves that they can they can step up. Of course, the uh, Seahawks weren't the only ones to get underway this weekend. A uh, bunch of great CAA games. Uh, the big shocker was probably in Williamsburg, Virginia, where William & Mary knocked off defending league champion VCU. You know, the, the tribe has really played well and uh, knocked off Wake Forest the week before. Um, just continuing to do what they do, uh, shoot a lot of threes, make a lot of threes, run back door. They've got some experienced guards. David Schneider's playing extremely, extremely well, and uh, they won that game 75 to 74. The the other kind of marquee game uh, of the weekend was in Philadelphia, where Drexel knocked off Northeastern 49-47. Classic Bruiser Flint style. I think if it were up to Bruiser, every game would be in the 40s, maybe even in the 30s just as long as they get, get the win. And uh, so all of those teams will enjoy a leg up on the rest of the conference for the next month. And then January 2nd, the games begin for, uh, for real. Every, every conference team will play three games in, in, in six days at that point, and, uh, and, and we'll have a better idea of where things stand. Okay, fans, well, that wraps up another edition of Hawk Talk. Seahawks have a big week this week. They return to action Monday against Campbell out of the Atlantic Sun, and then Wednesday they entertain ACC Power Wake Forest, and then Saturday they stay in the ACC heading up to John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville to face the Virginia Cavaliers. Stay tuned to starnewsonline.com or visit my blog for all the latest on the Seahawks, and we'll see you next week on Hawk Talk. <laughs>